Hello. So today we're going to see the focus of Jeremiah's attention move to the punishment inflicted by God. How the Lord has covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger. He has hurled the glory of Israel from heaven to earth and has not remembered his footstool in the day of his anger. Pause. Other books like 1 Chronicles and Psalms refer to his footstool as the Ark of the Covenant. Verse 2. The Lord has destroyed. He has not spared all the settlements of Jacob. In his wrath, he has overthrown the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has hurled them down to the ground. He has profaned the kingdom and its leaders. In fierce anger, he has cut off all the strength of Israel. He has pulled back his right hand from the enemy. And he has burned in Jacob like a flaming fire consuming on all sides. He has bent his bow like an enemy. His right hand is positioned like an adversary, and he has killed everything that was pleasant to the eye. In the tent of the daughter of Zion, he has poured out his wrath like fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He has engulfed Israel. He has engulfed all its palaces. He has destroyed its strongholds and caused great mourning and grieving in the daughter of Judah. And he has treated his tabernacle violently, like a despised garden. He has destroyed his appointed meeting place. The Lord has caused the appointed feast and Sabbath in Zion to be forgotten, and he has despised king and priest in the indignation of his anger. The Lord has rejected his altar. He has repudiated his sanctuary. He has handed over the walls of her palaces to the enemy. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord as on the day of an appointed feast. The Lord determined to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out a line. He has not restrained his hand from destroying, and he has caused rampart and wall to mourn. They have languished together. Pause. Jerusalem's wall was its security. Once the wall was destroyed, the city was prey for anyone and everyone. Verse 9. Her gates have sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her leaders are among the nations. The law is gone. Her prophets, too, find no vision from the Lord. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground and are silent. They have thrown dust on their heads. They have put on sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes fail because of tears. My spirit is greatly troubled. My heart is poured out on the earth because of the destruction of the daughter of my people. When little ones and infants languish in the streets of the city, they say to their mothers, where is grain and wine? As they faint like a wounded person in the streets of the city, as their lives are poured out in their mother's arms. How shall I admonish you? What shall I compare to you, daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I liken to you as I comfort you, virgin daughter of Zion? For your collapse is as vast as the sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets have seen for you worthless and deceptive visions, and they have not exposed your wrongdoing so as to restore you from captivity, but they have seen for you worthless and misleading pronouncements. All who pass along the way clap their hands in ridicule at you. They hiss and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem. Is this the city of which they said, perfect in beauty, a joy to all the earth? All your enemies have opened their mouths wide against you. They hiss and gnash their teeth. They say, we have engulfed her. This certainly is the day which we awaited. We have reached it. We have seen it. The Lord has done what he determined. He has accomplished his word, which he commanded from days of old. He has torn down without sparing and he has helped the enemy to rejoice over you. He has exalted the might of your adversaries. Pause. Verse 8 earlier clarified that God's purpose was to destroy Israel for their wicked acts. In the judgment upon Jerusalem and Judah, Yahweh fulfilled what he purposed and has fulfilled his word. Verse 18. Their heart cried out to the Lord, You wall of the daughter of Zion, let your tears stream down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief. Let your eyes have no rest. Arise, whimper in the night at the beginning of the night watches. Pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Raise your hands to him for the life of your little ones who languish because of hunger at the head of every street. 
See, Lord, and look, with whom have you dealt this way? Should women really eat their children, the little ones who were born healthy? Should priest and prophet really be killed in the sanctuary of the Lord? Pause. So this was an 18-month siege filled with death, starvation, and horrendous acts of pure desperation. A horrible situation that's difficult even to be informed of. Verse 21. On the ground in the streets lie young and old. My virgins and my young men have fallen by the sword. You have put them to death on the day of your anger. You have slaughtered without sparing. You called, as on the day of an appointed feast, my terrors on every side. And there was no one who survived or escaped on the day of the Lord's anger. As for those whom I brought forth healthy and whom I raised, my enemy annihilated them. All right, comment here. God's warnings to Israel as to what he'd do if they disobeyed are recorded in Leviticus chapter 26 and Deuteronomy chapter 28. He was very upfront with his warnings and faithfully carried it out upon their disobedience. All right, our saintly snippet for the day is from a book called Ministry Matters by Richard Gregory. And the chapter that we're going to read from is called, How Do I Respond in Time of Crisis? Jeremiah was a prophet with deep hurts. He is known as the weeping prophet. His lamentations contain some special verses that address God's faithfulness. I like the way the King James Version translates them. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should hope and quietly wait for the Lord. Lamentations chapter uh, 3, verses 22 through 26. Because of thy goodness of my God... My hurts did not turn into bitterness. My disappointment has become opportunity and my fears the fuel for the Holy Spirit's healing work in my life. Now when I sing, great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, I remember that God is faithful even when my hurts keep me from feeling it. Dear Lord, fill us with gratitude and generosity and open our hearts to be channels of blessing. Help us to be both wise and active in taking advantage of the opportunities that we have to do good to all, especially our own dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Please harness our gifts and abilities and put them to use for your glory. Empower us to work harder, serve more faithfully, and labor more diligently. Energize us by your spirit and keep us faithful to our calling. We thank you for the grace that sustains us each day. We pray that through the trials you send our way, you will keep our hearts filled with the peace which surpasses all comprehension and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys. We got the spirit. Let's go make it happen. God bless you. Have a great day.